needs are number six. After Ryan Gravenberg still a start to the season, it's got Liverpool fans thinking like, do we even need a defensive midfield? Because the way Gravenberg has been playing, honestly, listen, you saw the thumbnail of this video. He reminds me of Patrick Vieira, Yaya Torre and Busquets all in one. But this is nothing new. I mean, if you've been watching Ryan Gravenberg's career, if you've been following his career from when he made his debut back in 2018, like you should know, this is his level. Like he is a super talent. And funnily enough, the man who is in the opposite dugout on Sunday, the man who Ryan Gravenberg helped beat was actually the manager who gave him his debut back in 2018. At just 16 years and 130 days, he became the club's youngest ever Eredivisie debutant, beating a record held by the legendary Clarence Sadel. Gravenberg then went on to make 103 appearances under Ten Hag, winning three Dutch titles and two Dutch cups, as well as making his Netherlands debut at the age of 18. So it was only a matter of time before Europe's richest clubs came calling. But the Dutchman found it difficult to get game time at first. After moving to Bayern under Julian Nagelsmann's management, he started just one Bundesliga game and his fortunes didn't really change under his successor Thomas Tuchel. The German gave Gravenberg just two starts, otherwise he was restricted to substitute cameos, coming on 24 times in the league and registering only 937 minutes across all competitions. He then made the move to Liverpool last summer and initially the struggles continued at Anfield. The competition at Liverpool was just too fierce at the start, I mean the guy was competing with Dominic Sobosley who he signed in the same summer, McAllister who he signed in the same summer, even Endo if you're talking about the position that he's playing currently under slot. Endo was occupying that role and that's not even me mentioning the likes of Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, like there was too many guys to get ahead of. However this season bro is completely different under Arnie Slot. I mean Slot, we know in build up he likes to have two players, two midfielders in front of the back four helping aid the build up instead of the just one that we saw under Jurgen Klopp and that suits Ryan Gravenberg. Also helps that Slot is a Dutch manager, has a lot of them coiffy in possession principles, much more controlled, patient style of play that he's used to in Holland. And Gravenberg, someone who we know has come from the Ajax Academy, he's came through that pathway, he's used to playing this more patient style of play, he's much more used to that. Like if you look at someone like Gravenberg, he's got a lot of the physical qualities that you'd want, that someone like Jurgen Klopp would want in his midfielder. I mean, he can run for days. He stands at what, six foot two, six foot three, like he's got the height, he's got the stature. However, when you actually watch him play, like he's much more calm, he's much more technical than a destroyer. So this new style of play suits him because as I said, he's a player that likes to maintain possession. He has the ability to maintain possession in tight areas via quick combinations. His weight of pass stands out too. He often finds the correct foot of the teammates so they can turn away or play away direct from their opponent. We saw this on display in the game against Ipswich. I mean, Kanate has the ball, finds Ryan Gravenberg in the pocket. He does a little shimmy, releases the ball to Mo Salah. Mo Salah then passes it back to Trent, plays a wonderful pass through back to Mo Salah, assist to Jota and it's 1-0. Trent would get headlines and rightly so for his wonderful pass, Salah too for the assist but Ryan Gravenberg, it's the ability of Ryan Gravenberg in those tight spaces. First of all it's the intelligence, he knows Kanate needs an option so he frees himself up, creates a passing angle, then it's the first touch, the second touch, the ability to use both feet, the ability to move his body, to shift his body in a way to be able to get his pass off. Ryan Burke, we know he wasn't Slot's first choice in that position. I mean, Endo, first of all, he got binned straight away. And then we made the move for Zuba Mendy. Unfortunately, that didn't pan out well. He ended up rejecting us. But another man's trash, or one man's trash, is another man's treasure. Because this created a pathway, this created an opportunity for Ryan Gravenberg to stake his place on the side, and boy, has he taken it. Even though he did play occasionally as a pivot in Holland, as seen in the image above, it's not something that he's completely used to. That's why we've seen Slot using him in draws in a specific way. I mean, in training, we've seen Ryan Gravenberg has been deployed in the centre of the box. So when our players are doing a rondo, it's always you see Ryan Gravenberg in the centre. And what that allows you to build is that second nature ability to turn under pressure. That ability to play back to goal when there's pressure behind you, the ability to still be able to find your teammates. We've even seen Busquets be used in a drill similar to this. And listen, that man, if you're going to replicate anyone in that number six, if anyone is going to be your idol as a number six, Bro, let it be Sergio Busquets. However, one thing I will say though, even though Ryan's barely played as a six in his career, like the way that Arnie Slots wants his six to play, it does suit him a lot. Like he's actually got some of the similar qualities that Zuba Mendy had. First thing, they're two footed. They both have the ability to use both feet and that helps you a lot. I mean, when you're talking about build up, when you're talking about playing out of pressure, like if you can use both feet, that allows you to play at different angles. So let's just say McAllister passes him the ball on the left side, 
pressure's coming from the right, he can still retain that pass with his left foot. Whereas if someone was right footed, like he will need to use his right foot and then you're giving the opponent opportunity to nick the ball off you. Another similarity they have is they both got an engine. I mean, Zuba Mendy, everyone thought when we were signing him, everyone's, I was hearing people saying, ah, oh, this man's like a Jorginho, he's like a Busquets or something like that. No, Zuba Mendy actually had an engine. He could cover ground. And someone like Ryan Gravenberg, bro, he can do that too. But it's the ability, bro. It's the ability to play and receive on a half turn, bro. That is the most crucial, that is the most useful attribute that Gravenberg has as a number six. Because we saw it on full evidence in a disallowed goal against United. I mean, ball is fizzed in at pace from Van Dijk. Literally a brave pass into Gravenberg. Gravenberg checks one shoulder. He sees Maynou's coming. He sees the space behind Maynou. Maynou probably thinks he's going to pass back to Kanate or even do a bounce pass to McAllister. But Gravenberg, bro, he's 10 steps ahead. First touch into the space. Then we see his legs open up. We see that ability to drive into the space. Little shimmy past the defender, passes it to Luis Diaz, ball goes in, Trent scores. Of course it was disallowed, but we could see bro, the ability there to take the ball in a half turn, drive, that is so crucial. Because Graven Burke, bro, we know he can dribble. Like, he's one of the best ball carriers in the team. I mean, for someone who's played as a central midfielder for most of his career, he's such a song dribbler. He can escape pressure when he drops a shoulder to receive. His safe side turning is particularly strong. He waits until the opponent commits to a shoulder as they attempt to win the ball before rolling them to face forward. From there, he can drive out from the back to disrupt the opponent's press. I mean, Graven Burke, someone like Graven Burke, he would have been so useful last year in the games against Atalanta. Those guys do man-to-man -man marking. If we had someone like Graven Burke, in the centre If he would have played in them games bro It would have been long for Atalanta Because as I said before bro He's got the ability to go both ways And he retains that crucial element Of unpredictability Using a drop of the shoulder Or a knock and run While holding off his opponents With his strong upper body That's all the underball qualities Defensively I'll be honest there are some issues like we've seen especially in the game against Brentford where he got that silly yellow card like he is prone to making some rash slide tackles for me that's probably the biggest weakness that he has in his defending I mean when you talk about covering ground marking space like he can do that with ease interception I mean yesterday what did he have like four interceptions in the game against Manchester United but then I'm yet to see when an opponent is driving at him and he's on a back foot I want to see how he deals with that situation because he's not someone like Fabinho, like he's not someone that's been put in that situation for years and it's not something that he's really comfortable with. I will say though, if the team works as hard as they have been doing at the start of this season, I mean, we can get away with playing Ryan Graham back as a six and he will be fine. Because you look at a team, for example, like Newcastle, Bruno Gamaresh, like you wouldn't say this man's like a destroyer, you wouldn't call him like a Fabinho, Makalele or something like that, but he's been playing as a number six for years now and he's been one of the best midfielders in the league. And it works because Newcastle are one of the hardest working teams in the league. He's also got monsters either side. He's got Joe Linton right in front of him, who's an absolute animal. Then he's got guys like Sven Botman and Shah behind them to clean up as well when things go wrong. And granted, we might not have a player like Joe Linton in our midfield, but we do have Dominic Soboslai. And Soboslai, literally, bro, this guy is one of the most physical midfielders in the league. Like, honestly, when you talk about running power, when you talk about the ability to cover ground, this man is almost unmatched. And then behind him, we've only got Kanati and Virgil van Dijk, two of the most physical centre-backs, two of the most imposing centre-backs in the league. In theory, it should work. Uh, Slots even said it himself. What helps him and what el helps every player in this team is that the team is working together really hard and then as an individual you uh, take the benefits from them. United away was a tough test. I'm not going to say it wasn't. Going to Old Trafford is always tough but we are going to have tougher tests during the season. I mean if Gravenberg carries this form up, listen. I said at the start of the video, we won't need to buy a number six. Because you look at the defensive midfielder market, bro, like, let's be honest. The options, they aren't really much out there. There's a reason why we only went for Zuba Mendy and didn't go for an alternative. There's also the big elephant in the room in Bajetic as well. If he can go on and have a big season for Salzburg, who are in the Champions League, they're going to be playing the likes of Real Madrid, etc. If he has a big season for Salzburg and then comes back... He's going to be like a new signing too. I'm going to end on this. Bayern, when they bought Gavin Burke, they were thinking he was going to be the next Jude Bellingham. If he manages to fulfill his potential in the Liverpool shirt, we're aiming higher, bro. Yaya Torre, we're coming for you. Patrick Vieira, we're coming for you. Sergio Busquets, we're coming for you, my friend. And on that note, like, comment, subscribe. Without further ado, see you in the next one.